Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, and today we're going to start a new what if, and a collaboration with Feels What If of What If the Good Sands Won the War. Before we get started, I hope you subscribe to my channel and his channel, link in the description, and hit that bell icon to be informed of any future what ifs. If you hit the like goal of 15 likes, feel what ifs will make the next part. So let us start this new what if. Universe 7 Planet Sadala, the home planet of the Saiyan race. They were once, like any other race, trying to survive, until one day, some Saiyans' primal instincts awoke, thinking that they have more of a purpose in this universe than they are meant for conquering, to show them the true power of the Saiyan race. Some disagreed with that statement, so a civil war began between the Saiyans. Many years pass, and the war is still going, until one day, everything changes. A battalion of good sands were attacked by great apes and they were caught off guard and many of the good sands were killed. But one Saiyan has managed to stay alive. His name is Yamoshi. All the great are ready to finish off the pure Saiyan, but Yamoshi has had enough of it. They have been at war for so many years and the evil Saiyans just don't understand what they're doing. They should use their power for good for the universe, not for evil. And then he snaps. A golden aura surrounds him, which pushes all the gradients back. And they are shocked when they look back, and they're surprised to see a Saiyan now with golden hair. With this new mysterious power, Yamoshi defeats the squadron of Great Eight and was able to escape. When he returned back to his people, they were surprised with this power. It's amazing! And Yamoshi thinks that maybe everyone can learn this, and that maybe this will give them a chance. So he teaches every fighter how to go Super Saiyan, and explains how did he manage to unlock it. And after some time, every good fighter has access to this golden power. With this new power, they're able to overwhelm this evil Saiyan. But even with this great power, their number are smaller and the evil Saiyans and sheer number of great ape overwhelms them. It seems the good Saiyans still have no chance of victory, until one day, a group of Saiyans give their energy to Yamoshi for one last stand. But surprisingly, his key suddenly disappeared and he flew to the air. A red aura surrounded him and we, he descended back down. He had red hair and his key was undetectable. Even though no one can sense his power, Yamoshi can feel it. It's overwhelming, but calm at the same time. With this much power, he can defeat the evil Saiyan for sure. But the Saiyans are skeptical. This power may be amazing, but since they cannot sense it, it maybe isn't as amazing as Yamoshi says. Maybe there should be more who use this power, just in case. And two Saiyans volunteer to do it. Those Saiyans are Shalot and Giblet. They're also powerful warriors and were one of the first ones who unlocked Super Saiyan. So they agree, they do the same thing for them, and like for Yamoshi, a red aura surrounded them. And when they both descend, both have red hair. Without anyone knowing, they have managed to unlock the power of Super Saiyan God, and they cannot detect their key because they have managed to gain access to divine energy. So, without wasting any time, the, the good Saiyans launch an attack against the evil Saiyans, and with the power of three Super Saiyan Gods, they're easily being to handle the Great Ape Army. Even with the great number of evil Saiyans they have, they cannot deal with this much power. Even those who only have Super Saiyan are also having an easy time, since S Super Saiyan is way more impressive than the Great Ape. And so, they keep on fighting, and the good Saiyans are beginning to have an upper hand until a couple hours pass, and all the three Saiyans lose their Super Saiyan God power. They're panicking, because that was probably their last chance, but they're not gonna give up. The three turn Super Saiyan and rush back into the war. But, again, unknowingly, the three Saiyans didn't lose their power. They absorbed the power of the Super Saiyan God in their base form, which makes their Super Saiyan form even stronger than before. And after some time, the civil war has finally ended, with the good Saiyans emerging victorious. Many of the evil Saiyans were killed, but some were imprisoned. 
and now the good sands are thinking what to do. They can't stay on Sadala since the civil war practically destroyed the planet. So they use their limited spaceship to leave this planet, leaving the evil sands behind. But one spaceship remained and the remaining evil sands begin planning their revenge. Back to the good sands, they are traveling the galaxy looking for a new home until one day they land on a planet called Planet Plant. They talk with the natives and leaders of Planet Plant. They figured out that they're a race called Tuffles. The Saints ask the Tuffle for shelter in their planet. In exchange, they will use their strength to help with anything they can, since the Tuffles do, don't look too strong. The Tuffles are skeptical, but they seem nice, so they accept and welcome the Saints to their planet. The Saints and Tuffles look together in peace. And with the spaceship that the Saiyans have and with Tuffle's amazing technology, they're able to upgrade the spaceship and even create scouters which can detect a person's power level. And while the Tuffles are not fighters, they make up with their vast knowledge. But there are some Tuffle fighters, but there's not many of them and they're not really as strong as the Saiyans. So thanks to the Tuffles upgrading the Saiyan spaceship, they travel the universe helping any planet in need, like the Universe 6 Saiyans. Years pass. After some time, Giblet, Shout, and Yamoshi die of old age, but they were never forgotten as their saviors. But the legacy of the Super Saiyan God after some time was forgotten. But the legacy and power of the Super Saiyan was never forgotten. Many still have it, but they never usually train after getting Super Saiyan because they never did face a real threat or challenge and still believe in their natural potential. No one can surpass this power, right? Well, after many years, a threat actually arrives at Planet Plant. A spaceship lands, and in it comes out King Cold. His army is still pretty small, but is powerful, and he is powerful himself. And he has heard that this planet could actually be of high price, and the warriors here are pretty strong. So maybe he can get more valuable soldiers or, and resources. Of course, the Saints and Tuffles aren't going to go down without a fight, and they first ask nicely for King Cold to leave the planet or suffer the consequences. Cold, of course, does not listen and orders his scouts to attack. So the battle begins, and the Saiyans are having an easy time, even in their base state. As I told you, they may not have much training, but they have Super Saiyan, so they dispose of the soldiers pretty easily. King Cold is impressed. I guess the rumors about this plant were true, and now it is his turn. He gets into a fighting stance, and the Saiyans can tell that this guy is the real deal, so there's no point of holding back. So every Saiyan transforms into their Super Saiyan form. King Cold again is surprised, they can change hair? And even though he cannot sense it, he can tell that they're stronger, but he's still confident. And the fight continues, an army of Super Saiyans against King Cold. So, in terms of power levels, all the Saiyans are around 10,000 and 15,000. Since when the Saiyans get Super Saiyan, they usually slack off on their training, because they still believe in their natural potential. And so, after they get Super Saiyan, they never usually train. But when they go Super Saiyan, the weakest is about 500,000 and the strongest are about 750,000. But King Cold power level is enormous, with a power level of 50 million. That may be high, but it was stated that King Cold's second form is stronger than Mecha Frieza, but weaker than 50% Frieza. So let's just put him a little bit weaker than 50% Frieza, so 50 million should be good. Which means even with an army of Super Saiyans, they're unable to do anything against King Cold. It's just a slaughter. King Cold kills every Saiyan in sight. Even with their numbers, they can't just deal any damage to him. They never fought such a threat before, they keep on fighting, even though it doesn't accomplish anything, until King Sadala, which we will call King Vegeta, comes in and asks the king to stop all this, he'll do anything for this slaughter to end. King Cole smiled, said of course he'll stop, he only needs to do one thing, to kneel before his new master, and not wanting to see the slaughter continue, he does that with the other Saiyans and Tuffles doing the same, and King Cold laughs, proclaiming this plant as his own. Time passes, with King Cold ravaging the plant and using their resources and technology as his own. This plant was actually pretty valuable for him, 
she got some soldiers, some researchers, and some great material. And after some time, Frieza takes the throne. This Frieza is actually a little bit stronger since he trained a little bit, since his dad convinced him. Because the strongest Super Saiyans are actually stronger than him in his first form. So not to be mocked, he trained for a little bit, even though it was disgusting. He needs to make sure that his power was superior than any Super Saiyan. Some Saiyans became loyal to Frieza, and their wild Saiyan instinct awoke once again, turning them evil. But some Saiyans still can't forget Frieza and King Cold about what they did, and start planning a rebellion. And most of the Tubbles are actually on the rebellion side. Very little Tubbles became loyal to Frieza or King Cold, but they were some. The Saiyans are still ordered to conquer plants, but many Saiyans reject doing that. Only those who are very loyal to Frieza did that, and with the power of Super Saiyan, they easily conquered any plant. But then one day, all the Saiyans have been ordered to return to Planet Plant. Many didn't think much of it, but one Saiyan was suspicious. His name was Bardock. Even though the good Saiyans were different kinds of people, let's just say story-wise, all the Saiyans are the same, just that they are good and have some quite different personality. Most of them. He is suspicious that maybe Frieza is planning to destroy them all, since they are beginning to become too strong and the rumors about rebellion scares Frieza. Even King Vegeta is suspicious of Frieza's orders, like Bardock. Bardock says to his wife Gini that there is a chance that Frieza is planning to kill them all, so he needs to assemble the rebellion. This may be their final time to strike. Gini is skeptical because she also thinks nothing of it, but she trusts her husband. Bardock also convinces Gini that they should take their son Kakarot away from this plant, just in case he is correct. So they take a space salon and send him to her, where he should be safe, and if Bardock was wrong, they can get him later. So after Kakarot's ship flies off, Bardock also flies off to prepare the army to take a final stand against Frieza. And that's where we got this part of what if the good Saiyans won the war. As always, if you have what if suggested for me, write down in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing. And if this video reaches 15 likes, Kuro What Ifs will make the next video. So go check him out. Link it into his channel will be in the description. And I will see you guys in my next video.